guys, it's Bryony. Welcome back to my channel. And today I have a very exciting guest for me. This is Hannah from the Hannah Whitten and Friends channel and also the More Hannah channel. And I'm so excited to be filming with Hannah today because particularly you guys have messaged me so many times being like, oh my gosh, you should do a video with Hannah. Like you guys have so much in common and it's just sort of never worked out or we never got round to it. Uh, but we have quite a lot of overlap in our videos because yeah. you typically talk more around like the sex education side of things, but talk about periods every now and then too. Mm -hmm. And my channel initially started out talking about sustainable period products and menstruation in general. And that's how I found your channel originally. I was like, oh my God, she knows it all. <laughs> like Somebody I know actually messaged me privately and was like, oh my goodness, Hannah mentioned you in one of her videos. <laughs> and I was yeah. like, oh cool. But because I'm like ace as fuck, I didn't really watch a lot of your videos because of that side of things. I was like, eh. Love that ace as fuck. Yeah, yeah, like it wasn't really like my area at that time. Yeah, yeah. But more recently, Hannah and I have both had children. Mm -hmm. And so there's now this whole other side of things with how your body changes and in particular your periods change after having a baby. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. So the first question we're going to talk about is what was your postpartum bleeding experience like? Because I think this is one of the things that so many people aren't aware even happens to you mm. until you like get pregnant and go and have like the antenatal classes or even you don't know until afterwards and then you're like, oh, this is a thing. Yeah, it's like nine months of a period being stored up inside you that all has to come out. It's been stretched. <laughs> like your uterus is like this big, well not this big, but it's bigger yeah. and then it's got to shrink back down and all that blood's got to come out. It's got to go somewhere. So what was yours like? Were you like really heavy? Oh, the other thing I should mention, sorry, is that Hannah and I both had C-sections. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. Yours, mine was planned, so I didn't go into labor beforehand. You had like a four day labor. I had a four day labor and then a C-section, but I feel really good about it. Hannah has done a video talking about her birth story. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so it's a really good one. You wanna go and watch it. But that probably might have affected how our postnatal bleeding was in terms of being different to someone who maybe had a vaginal birth. So I think mm. it'd be interesting to see yeah. if there were any differences between us because we both had C-sections. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to cast my mind back to then. I don't like remember it being particularly heavy. Like it wasn't uncontrollable. I wasn't mm. like constantly like changing pads and stuff, but I was like wearing pads like constantly for, I don't know, at least a month. Oh really? Yeah. It was quite long. I just, it was just like, by the end, it was just like <laughs> barely anything. Just but it along. I definitely, oh yeah, I, I mean, I say that, I'm honestly like drawing that number from God knows where, because I cannot remember. It's quite a blur, those newborn yeah, days. I'm like, what <laughs> was I doing? Um, but it did, it did feel like it lasted a long time, even mm. if like the amount of blood on a daily basis like was manageable. Yeah, so mine was, I remember in the hospital, I had like a kind of a heavy bleed straight after surgery. Mm. And at that point you're completely like numb and a bit like what has just happened because the drugs are strong. And I remember the nurses changing my pad for me, but the second pad they put on, it was virtually clean when they took it off. Wow. Like, so I only had like that really initial, that initial... heaviness. Yeah. And you don't feel them putting that pad in because they do it in surgery and then you kind of wake I up and it's there. I even thought about that. I'm now like, I honestly can't remember. Because you have a catheter in and everything. You have a catheter in. There's a lot of stuff so going somebody on. somebody must have put a pad in or like maternity underwear on me. Oh my God. Yeah, I hadn't even thought about that. Because other things yeah. that you don't really think about is that they like shave you as well, of like where they're going to like do the incision. Did they ask you beforehand? Because I remember my midwife came up and said, is it okay if I shave you? And I was like, I assume you have to, but like, thank you for I can't asking remember. for my consent. I think I asked them because I remember when I had like years ago, I had my abdominal surgeries, they shaved my belly, but I don't oh, right. remember, like I wasn't told about that. I just yeah. remember like a few months later being like, why is my belly like a little bit hairier? And it was like, oh wait. They shaved you. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, but they only yeah. shave like a strip across Tiniest. the top. So yeah. the rest of you is still natural and then you're just missing this little bit of like hair across the, like, the hat. -section. Yeah, so I think just a lot of like grooming and bodily care stuff happens when you're kind of out of it. Preoccupied with, oh, with the baby, things. yeah. Yeah, just all sorts. Yeah. Um, but I do remember when I was in hospital like expelling a really large blood clot, um, which I've never had in my periods before. Mm. So that was like a new experience for me. And I remember being on the toilet mm. and like, ringing the <laughs> ringing the, the bell, bell so yeah. that one of the um, midwives could come and take a look at it because they did like you know tell you what was like normal bleeding mm. and then like if you know you experienced x y and z then you know speak to 
the doctor or like you know let us know so i was just like they should probably know that this has happened Check that out. Yeah. yeah and it was fine they were like that's very normal like nothing to worry about yeah um, but it was like the biggest thing i've ever seen <laughs> I remember they, I think it was a 50p piece they said, if you had one bigger than a 50p oh, piece, okay. that's where you had to worry. Because with like your normal period flow, I think it's a 10p piece it's up to is normal. But obviously with oh, the, having had okay, a baby, yeah, yeah. it's 50p, it goes a bit bigger. It goes a bit bigger, everything um, is a bit bigger. I don't think I had any clots actually, thinking about it. But I definitely, yeah, I had that initial heavy bit, they kind of basically just shove a pad between the legs. You've got no underwear on or anything, because they're just kind of lying there. Oh, that I don't does know if you seem familiar. Yeah. yeah. Just I don't, like, this is weird, like, why? <laughs> I don't think I had underwear on for, like, the first two days that I was in hospital. Because I was numb for a long time oh, really? as well. I, um, because Rowan was having, like, breathing difficulties when he came out, he got whisked off straight to NICU. Mm. Um, and I remember, like, lying there with, like, half of my body numb and then being like, you can't go see him because you need to be able to, like, get into a wheelchair and you need to be able to get there. And I was like, oh, I will get there. And it's like that opening scene of Kill Bill where she's, like, willing her, like, get toes to move. Moving. And I was, like, I was like, I've got some sensation. I was, like, twiddling my feet. And, yeah, so I, like, was, like, ready to, like, start moving as soon as possible so I could go yeah. see the baby. Um, but yeah, I have no idea what was on me. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, so I think mine took like a whole day to wear off completely. I think I got mm. some feeling back, but I didn't stand up until like two days afterwards. It took me quite a while. Mm. But in terms of bleeding, I remember while I was lying on the bed, after that initial blood on that pad, I didn't really bleed at all until I started moving a bit more. Mm. And that's the point where I'd start wearing pads. But my, my flow was never that heavy in my like postpartum bleeding. I remember that I'd bought these like really big NatraCare pads and I don't think I ever opened the box because I'd also bought some like Tenor Lady pull-up underwear. Yeah. That, because people had said they were really good for, mm -hmm. for C-sections and for like catching a postpartum flow when it was really heavy. Yeah. And so I had those and they were really great to put on from a comfort point of view. So as soon as I was up and moving about, that was what I used, I remember. But they were never like, I never needed the heaviness, like the absorbency of them. Mm -hmm. My flow kind of quite quickly got into what I'd call like a regular heavy period. So I was kind of expecting like Niagara Falls to <laughs> literally come. Yeah, I mean, for me, happened. it was definitely heavier than any period that I've ever had mm. and longer. And yeah, I used like, yeah, those like really nice, comfortable, soft, like, um, pull up <laughs> basically they are wearing your own pull up nappy <laughs> um which i like as well because of the high waisted over the c-section mm. scar as well it just like feels very protective and yeah. then it also like is absorbing all of your blood as well kind of yeah. holds you in that very was much, one of the things very you very much, much so. wanted yeah one thing that <laughs> happened to me with postpartum stuff is because my bleeding lasted so long mm. and i was basically wearing these underwear and these pads like 24 7 not like confirmed or anything but very much possible that that mm. is what caused like a lot of irritation that i got on my skin around my vulva so oh. yeah just like right after that over that summer i was like in and out of doctors and sexual health clinics trying to like mm. get the right creams and like figure out what was going on and i'm pretty sure it was basically like i spent four to six weeks like wearing underwear and pads when that is not what my vulva is used to that's really interesting you pointed that out because I remember the other thing I had was a rash like across the back of my legs, like along the top of my ah. buttocks, back, like top of my legs, bottom of my buttocks, yeah. had this really itchy rash. And I suspect that was because when you're in the hospital, they like make you sit on this kind of like incontinence pad. Yeah, yeah. And then like the non-breathable underwear that I had put over the top of it, I think that's what caused this rash. It was so itchy. Mm. Fortunately, it did like clear up, I think after a couple of days. I yeah, think I put yeah. Sudacreme on it or something. I was like, oh, that's the work. Yeah. Um, and it did clear up, but that was the other thing, yeah, because you, you're wearing a lot of non-breathable materials. I really should have gone to my cloth pads sooner. I had them and I didn't use them, and I think, why? Yeah, I went to, like, reusable period underwear, like, later in it when I felt a bit more, like, in control <laughs> of, the flow. of it yeah. all. Um, but, yeah, everything that I was using was, like, disposable stuff. And, yeah, I think, like, next time I would be like, okay, no, let's like treat your vulva nicely <laughs> and like, yeah, use the reusables, use the cloth stuff, I think. Yeah. It definitely did feel nicer, I remember, when I switched over, mm. but I didn't do that until I got home. And I think we were actually in hospital for a similar length of time because I was about four days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so actually, when I was in hospital, it was just so much easier 
to use the disposables and I thought I'll do it when I get home and then ended up being in a bit longer than I initially mm -hmm. planned. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what triggered it. So the next thing we're going to cover is the first period after baby. So that initial postpartum period bleeding, oh actually, so mine lasted for, the initial bleed was five days and then I kind of spotted on and off after a couple of weeks. So I remember okay. I bled for five days, had five days nothing then another 10 days, then nothing. And then about five weeks later, I had some spotting. And then at nine weeks, then finally it was done. Mm. But my period came back at 15 weeks postpartum. Oh, wow. Which I was so pissed about. Huh? I would be. Because I, I was be. I was exclusively breastfeeding and I was like, this shit better not be turning up. <laughs> but I knew it was coming because I just have a really good sense of my body. And I think at around 13 weeks, I was like, I think I'm ovulating. I've got some hip pain. Mm -hmm. I've got some of the symptoms, like my cervical mucus changed. Yeah. And I was like, mum, I need to go get an ovulation test. I think I'm ovulating, which is what people probably say about pregnancy tests. But I was like, yeah. it's an ovulation test. I need test. to know. <laughs> And I took it and it was positive and I was like, damn it, this period's coming. And it did like 10 days later. Um, so I was really annoyed about that. How was it? Was it different? It was definitely different. So it was much heavier than it's ever been, mm -hmm. but less painful. Oh wow, okay. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. my periods prior to birth were excruciating. I have a condition called adenomyosis. If you've mm. watched my channel before, you'll be aware of it. Uh, basically, like the lining of my uterus has grown into the muscular walls of my uterus. It's kind of like a cousin to endometriosis. Yeah. Causes excruciating pain. I'm typically on the pill to stop my periods because I was like, I'm done with this every month. Yeah. And this time, like I still needed to take some pain medication, but I remember my period started and I had no clue. And I was like, that is unheard of. Ah, I usually yeah, get yeah, yeah. cramps leading up to it. So that was the biggest change for me. Really heavy. I actually ended up using my, the pads I bought for my postpartum bleeding, like the really heavy, actually I was really kind. Some people had gifted me some. Mm. So I had these really massive pads and I used to wear them at night because they were brilliant for just covering mm -hmm, everything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So they did get use out of them, which I'm kind of pleased about. But yeah, so it was 15 weeks after Oren was born that my period came back. Very heavy, but less painful. Oh, wow. So my, well, before my first period came back, I actually started the pill three weeks postpartum. Oh, yes, I forgot about that. Because um, previously, every time I've gone on, like, progesterone-only contraception, mm. so either, like, the, the pill or the marina coil, my periods have stopped. And I was like, I do not want to be fucking with my periods right now. <laughs> and so I went on the pill, yeah, started about three or four weeks postpartum. Um, and it, at least at the beginning, my period was nowhere to be seen. Mm. I couldn't really feel anything of a cycle, although I never really like could feel much of a cycle before. Mm. Um, and then, uh, and also exclusively breastfeeding. So a few weeks before Rowan's first birthday, I got a really bad stomach bug. And I was oh, yeah. in bed for a few days and um, not vomiting, but because I have a stoma bag, it was like the, the, the stoma bag equivalent of diarrhea <laughs> and just feeling yep. horrendous. And then my period came. Oh, perfect timing. And like, yeah, just as I was getting better, it was like then the period arrived and I was so confused because I was still taking the pill. Mm. Um, and I have so many like theories about this that are unprovable for my specific case. But like one is like, because of my stoma, everything gets digested like so much faster. So oftentimes when I get nauseous and a normal person would vomit, I think my stoma works faster Oh, right, to, So yeah. it's like, which is the quickest way out? And it's down, that not way. up. Yeah. So oftentimes mm. when I'm like sick, it comes out that way anyway. So I'm like, maybe, you know, if I'd have thrown up, I would have vomited up the pill. But in this case, it's all coming out too fast. So Went it's not quickly. being absorbed. Like there's not enough mm. time for it to be absorbed. Uh, just a theory, a hypothesis, who knows? Yeah, that's really interesting because I've now started back on the pill, mm. but I've done a bit of like the hokey cokey with it because when I got my period back at 15 weeks, I was like, I do not want this I'm going on the pill. So I'm also on the progesterone only yeah. pill. However, even though in theory, this pill is safe to take if you're breastfeeding, mm. I'm pretty confident that it ended up reducing my supply. Oh, and okay. so that started, so Orin started having like faltering growth and that was because he wasn't getting enough breast milk from me. And so I then decided to come off it again, to see if like pumping madly yeah, yeah. could get my supply back up. Unfortunately, it didn't. I then ended up being prescribed some medication that has brought it up. Oh. And at that point, I've gone back on the pill now. So I had like a month period where I came off it to try yeah. and like boost my milk supply, which unfortunately didn't work. So then, of course, I ovulated again, 
and I've just literally last week had my second period since mm. having baby, but it's not been Naruto. It was more than a month after the 15 oh, okay, week yeah, one yeah, yeah, because yeah. I was on the pill for a month and stopped it. And then I came off and my body's like, So you've what not had like one on? full cycle? No. Sit postpartum, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so I, like I had my, my first period and then went on the pill straight away because the pain was like not as bad, but it was still there. And I was like, I'd rather You're not. You're like, I can't be bothered with this. No, rather yeah. not be dealing with that and a baby. So I thought I'll take the pill see what happens and then like it I think it did stop my ovulation I think it did work like immediately for that mm. but then obviously the milk supply issue happened so I'm now back on it so it'll be interesting to see if I get another one yeah because I'm not planning to stop it this time yeah no, but fair enough all these things you don't realize can can affect it yeah so yeah when my period came I was like well this is the only reason why I'm on this pill so I guess I'll just stop taking the pill. Get rid of it. Yeah. So I've stopped taking the pill. But since I stopped, I think I've had two full cycles. And before I got pregnant, my cycles were usually on the longer side and also like quite irregular. Mm. And when we were trying to conceive, I found out that I had um, polycystic ovaries, which mm. probably was contributing to a lot of that. Um, so I kind of was like, I have no idea what my period is going to do, like postpartum. But that yeah. first bleed... I got excruciating back pain and I'd never had back pain during oh. a period before and I was so mad about it. But I had um, really bad back pain during labor and it was That's very similar to that. Yeah. yeah, it was really similar to my the yeah my back contractions. Um, and I was like, oh no, if this becomes like my period, my normal period, <laughs> I'm like, absolutely not. But one of the things that um, I used to get routinely um, that I haven't gotten back is the breast pain. Like, oh, right. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, has that got to do with breastfeeding? I I honestly it's don't know. All these things. Because, like, if I was having that breast pain now and still having to breastfeed Rowan, that would be a different story entirely because he likes to punch and grab and pinch. I've got the, like, at the mouth now. <sighs> it's just fun and games. Yeah. It's all fun and games. That's interesting you reminded me about like PMS because mm. obviously you don't just bleed, you have other symptoms yeah. too. I've usually been quite, pretty lucky. I've not had many PMS symptoms other than cramping leading up to my period. Yeah. So I never had like sore boobs or got really emotional or like experienced mood swings or anything like that, mm -hmm. which are all really common things to experience. And that stayed the same for me mm -hmm. with like coming back. It's just been, it's got heavier and less painful. So. Yeah. The back pain like has continued but nowhere near as bad as that first period interesting um but it is like just a twinge there on like day one um and i'm like actually this is fine i can handle this um mm. but the boob pain not being there excellent love that for me <laughs> yes but the, that's the, but the weird thing is that was always my like signal of like when my period was coming so you've lost your like indication yeah so i don't come in no it's so annoying so i would my boobs would start hurting and then 10 days to two weeks later period and so mm. I would always like no like okay it's coming because I never really could figure out when I was ovulating in a way that a lot of other people can um and so yeah I've lost that indicator it's really really confusing yeah so my periods have always been pretty regular mm -hmm. like almost 28 days on the dot give or take a day or two you're like the textbook yeah I literally yeah. am the textbook everything like it was painful but it was really regular so yeah. for me like my phone would be like your period's coming high. Yeah. and I'd be like yep can feel that but also I got really bad ovulation pain mm -hmm. so one of my hips would hurt and I'd be like oh that's that's okay, what's yeah, happening yeah. also meant I could know which ovary the egg yeah. that Oren was conceived from was because <gasps> which one his left love which I, lo I love my left ovary more than my right which feels weird to say but I don't know why <laughs> I just prefer my left one and I was like yes left ovary go left ovary but oh I my could, god I love that I could feel the pain and it actually happened because Oren's conceived via IUI mm -hmm. that happened like literally a couple of hours after the IUI was done, like after they sent it to me, oh, I could wow. feel the pain. I was like, I'm ovulating, perfect timing. Good timing, body. Swim, sperm, swim. <laughs> yeah, my periods are all over the place. It sounds like classic PCOS. Yeah, well, I also don't know if I've got the syndrome or if I've just got polycystic ovaries because none of the other like, other than irregular periods, I don't have any of the other like symptoms yeah. that are part of the syndrome as a whole. So I, I have no idea. Um, but my first full cycle postpartum was 66 days. Oh, that's long, yeah. Long. And that's actually the longest it has ever been since I started tracking. Mm. So my, like, when I look at the app, it's like anything ranges from like 30 days to like 50 days, with my average being around 40. 
and you're still breastfeeding as yeah. well because that can also if, if like Rome was going through a regression at some point or feeding particularly more yeah that knows? can also yeah. like make your body like stop. ovulate at yeah different ovulate time different times too um and then my next cycle following that was 31 days like 66 to 31 and Tough. now and now hold on I'm due any minute now because I've had like some serious discharge so I think I've ovulated but let's get, let's get the app out. What day of this cycle am I currently on? We love some data. Yeah. Day 37. So, oh, so it's possible. So any day now. You have just reminded me that I didn't track this period at all. <gasps> so I need to put that data in. Yeah. <laughs> but I, when I yeah. started. I just had some serious discharge that was very akin to that, like, ovulation, like, fertile discharge and a little bit of cramping. So I was like, oh, is that an ovulation mm. cramp? Um that's changed yeah. for me too. Like it mm. used to be very distinctly one hip and then this month it was kind of like all across, mm. kind of like period pain too, so. You're like, no, which over is Yes, it? which over is it? So <laughs> I'll be curious to see like whether that stays or not. Yeah. But yeah, changes have, have happened. Yeah. So the final section that we're gonna kind of cover in this particular video is around what your preferred period product is and if it's changed since having a baby. Mm. Yes, 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 it's changed. So pre-pregnancy, menstrual cup user, through mm. and through like those first few days I'll be wearing a menstrual cup all day all night and then like towards the end of my period when it's just kind of like spotting or whatever yeah, I would just like wear some period underwear just to like mm -hmm. and then sometimes I'll just wear black underwear and I'll be like I'm just I don't know I'm gonna bleed into this off um that's brave <laughs> I, I even I haven't got to that level yet <laughs> I just like I'm like I've used all my period underwear it's fine black underwear is fine it's just gonna be like a little bit of brown um and now it's period underwear for the entire oh, right. cycle, yeah. which, you know, took some, I don't know, bravery on my part because I've never used period underwear on like the heavy days. On the heavy days. Mm. Um, but, I, you know, I bust out my super heavy um, and they just about manage it. Like, it's, yeah. I do have to sometimes like dab away the excess or occasionally I'll just like throw in a, a pad on top. Oh yeah, that's something good yeah. for people to know actually. If you're particularly heavy and you're going out for the day or you're gonna be somewhere where you it's not so easy to change, mm. a good tip is to remember that you can actually stick a pad or clip a pad if you're using a reusable on the top of one. And then yeah. when you go to the toilet, you just take that one off and you change it and then you use the period underwear. So you can kind of get two in one. Yeah, yeah. No. Um, so if you, are, if you are heavy, you can do it. So you've obviously did that. Yeah. And but yeah, the reason for that is because after um, birth, my pelvic floor basically just like seized up. And so mm -hmm. um, penetrative sex was off the table, but then so was using a menstrual cup. Um, yeah. And even since being able to have penetration again, I like tried using a menstrual cup. And I know we were DMing about this. Yes, I was like, you need this one, Hannah. <laughs> yeah, which I still haven't got. Um, oh, I don't know, I could have bought one. I, I feel like I need to like, Try, get it before this next period but I just know that I'm going to put it off and then this next period will come and I'll be like ugh. but the two menstrual cups that I have one is the smaller size diva cup and then the mm. other one that I got more recently is the like post birth over 30 <sighs> I hate it um Same. moon cup and so I was trying that one, and then I also retried the diva cup as well because I know that that one fitted my body mm -hmm. and no luck um, but oh, yeah, I need to try it again. In terms of no luck, like, was it getting it in and open, or like when it was in, it was slipping down, or something going on? Um, getting it in and open, and it not hurting. Right. So it's the tightness. Yeah, yeah it felt like it couldn't open fully because it felt like the walls of my vagina were like crushing, crushing it, in it and not yeah. letting it open. And so then any pressure that it was putting on my vaginal walls was just was, out was of like out of yeah. and then put, trying to pull it out oh my god that was like a whole like painful panicky moment <gasps> yeah the, in fairness like the moon cup b is probably the worst cup you could have chosen for that i didn't even choose it it was hashtag gifted so i was like i'll try this one but i want to get the was it the lily cup yeah the soft the soft one there's kind of like it, that's quite a tricky scenario to actually fit with menstrual cups because uh, I often get asked by people like mm. what do I need for this and this that is particularly challenging because for, we typically say for people with a very strong pelvic floor that crushes it you want a really firm cup that's going to open up more easily mm. but if you're getting pain then you don't want that so you actually kind of need one that's softer but is more malleable so you can kind of open it up yourself yeah, yeah, it does yeah. require a bit of fiddling and kind of like getting to 
getting to grips with how to open it, but that is much more likely to work for you than it was like, Yeah, I do want to get yeah. back on my menstrual cup game because it is a bit of more of a faff wearing um, period underwear like 24 seven, especially at night. I love mm. being like naked, you know, like having everything yeah. like airy and breathing at night. But then if I'm on my period, then I'm like, oh, great, I have to wear underwear all night now. Yeah. It's, it is a tricky one, I think, mm -hmm. with that kind of situation. So it does require a bit of playing around, but then obviously menstrual cups are expensive. Yeah, so, so it's like trying them is hard. <laughs> you need to, you, you're like, I need to find the one that's gonna work for me first time, so I've not spent like 100 pounds on all these yeah, different yeah. cups. Mm -hmm. It's not like something you can send back easily. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it is a bit of a tricky one. Um, there's also the type of cup which goes in like a um, disc. And that mm. may also work better. It depends. I've heard of those. Yeah, it depends on like where the tightness is and everything. Because it ty yeah. typically they go in and tuck up behind your pubic bone. But also, it might be better now anyway because yeah. like you know that I, softening of my pelvic floor to allow for penetration, and then like that ha I've noticed that been getting better anyway. So I'm like every cycle I've just like retry the menstrual cup and be like, yeah. let's see how we're going today. Let's give it a go. Well, you can certainly do that this time, yeah, and then exactly. maybe you might have to cave and try something else but fingers crossed it works fingers crossed so with my period I've kind of gone from one to the other I wasn't so much a menstrual cup user actually mm. just before like getting pregnant with well I actually didn't have my period before and other than to come off the pill to obviously yeah. get my cycles back and start trying again but prior to that I had pretty much been a pad and period underwear girl mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like that's where I had I, I did use menstrual cups, but again, because my period is so painful, it wasn't something I particularly wanted to do when I was cramping, was like fold a menstrual cup and stick it in there. So I tended to use those ones towards the end of my cycle. So from like day three, four onwards, when my period was a bit lighter, but also by that point, the pain was much more manageable or gone. Mm. That's when I would use menstrual cups. That's so funny, we're like reverse. <laughs> yeah, that's what I would use it for because it was just like, okay, now I feel comfortable doing it, but I just wanted soft, cushy pads to sit on like the first day or two mm. and to just wallow in self-pity and chocolate cake, to be honest. <sighs> Now I'm hungry. <laughs> so that's kind of like what my period products were beforehand. Mm. But now I'm actually using a menstrual cup more. That's so it's gone, gone the other way. And obviously I'm, because this was like what I did for work and everything, I've got tons in a cu cupboard. Yeah, so yeah. I literally have so tons can, to choose like, from. Yeah, you can figure out which one works best for you. Yeah, so the one I'm currently using is my organic cup. And I'm really quite liking that at the moment. I might try another one next time. But yeah, so on the softer side, I don't know, yeah, I don't know if because I didn't go through labour and mm. didn't deal with contractions, whether that had anything to do with it, but my pelvic floor hasn't really changed at all yeah. since having Orin. So I, I didn't notice any difference with like using the cup or anything. Um, so I think that helped me kind of get used to it because I didn't have to use a new one, even though I had multiple sizes, yeah. I was still able to use the same size one. So it's like worth noting if you have a C-section, particularly if it's planned or even unplanned, it's worth trying, or even a vaginal birth to be honest too, because all that stuff about like after a baby like, over 30 is all nonsense. It's to do with like your pelvic floor and your period. It's so individualistic. Yeah. It is. I would always mostly go on based off of whether you have a tight pelvic floor or not and how heavy your flow is. Because if you're heavier, you want the bigger cup for like the capacity. And if you're kind of more on the smaller side, I just go for a longer, narrower one for capacity. And mm. if you've got like a lower cervix, you can go for a shorter, fatter one. But there's so many available. Uh, we could take do a whole video on that, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> but basically you can play around. So yeah, I was quite lucky that my same one worked. Yeah. And so using that again with period underwear, also some pads too. Uh, particularly at night, I like to use like my massive pads and get really like cushy and comfy with them. But that was, yeah, so I definitely also noticed some changes after having a baby with how I care for my period. Yeah, why do you think you like went for cups? Like what was more like appealing about them with like current parenting lifestyle? So I think for me, it was to do with the fact that my period got much heavier. Mm. So when your peri period's heavier, and like I wasn't used to that before. I had a heavy day, but yeah. this time like it lasts longer too. Yeah. I used to be five days, every single period was the same. Heavy, a little bit lighter, moderate, very light, spotting. Yeah. Like, and then maybe like a bit of brown discharge for a yeah. few days, but I don't count that as period. But yeah, now it is more like seven to eight days. Mm. And like, I have a few more heavier days. So I just can't be asked to be like changing pads constantly or yeah. underwear. So when you've got a cup in, like you can wear that for, now I can wear it for six hours and change it. I used to be able to go the full day. Yeah, same, I would just change it like 
in the morning and at night I used to be able to kind of do. Yeah, say so I can't do that anymore, mm. unfortunately. I can feel it like bubbling and I'm like, oh, <laughs> needs to be changed. <laughs> it's gonna spill. <laughs> needs to be emptied quick. And uh, yeah, but like having that in is just so much more comfortable now because I can, like, I can feel the gushing this time, which mm. I couldn't do before. So having the cup, I find really helps with that. I occasionally feel gushing and then I'm like, oh, my period started and then it's just discharged. <laughs> I, Normally, I, if it's not yeah. accompanied with cramps, but um, oh, I'm just like, what is this? I think I occasionally get that, but like it's mostly period. If I feel yeah. a proper gush, like warm gush, I'm like, oh, that's blood. I just feel like a, I don't know, like a, a wet drip exiting my body. Absolutely lovely. Yeah, <laughs> we love it. So before we finish up, have you got any sort of final thoughts mm. on periods post baby that you'd like to add to this conversation? Yeah, I'm just really enjoying like tracking them again because mm. my period was so unpredictable before well I say so unpredictable it was predictable in its unpredictableness in terms of timings but my symptoms were always very predictable like the boobs and mm. like my cramping and then actually what the bleeding experience was like itself and so I'm enjoying this process of like figuring out what my new normal is like if yeah I can, if I can find one and then also kind of figuring out like I have no idea like when I'll stop breastfeeding. So it'll be mm. interesting to see like how, the impact on that. Yeah, yeah, like if that changes things as well. I'm really enjoying my boobs not aching because oh, having achy boobs for two weeks is just- That doesn't sound fun. It's not fun. Maybe, hopefully my period comes soon so I can just not be just like constantly like carrying around like underwear and pads with me everywhere I go, like just in case. Yeah, and I think I'm kind of like the opposite. Mm. I'm kind of hoping my period doesn't come back again now yeah. because I'm on the pill and I'm like, please work. Yeah. But I think it's been interesting to kind of have a new relationship with my period mm. post baby mm -hmm. and be like, okay, this is new, like something's changed. And I was told by my gynecologist that my adeno might be much better after having a baby. Mm. A baby in some ways is the best cure. I say cure because no one's having a baby just to get rid of adenomyosis. Mm, nah. It's a bit extreme. Yeah. But like it's a good cure for adenomyosis. And so far, like the symptoms terms of that in terms of pain has been much more manageable wow so that's been really curious so if you are somebody who has endometriosis or adenomyosis and you want to have a baby and you want to have a baby <laughs> afterwards you may find that it changes so it's just worth bearing in mind yeah. that this it could be a positive thing so that is how our periods have changed since having a baby yeah i really hope you guys enjoyed this video please let us know if you've had a baby have you noticed your period change or even if you haven't have you had anything else you've noticed has changed your periods breastfeeding if you have had a child if you've not breastfed like what have you noticed the differences with that yeah and just so we can start a really good conversation on this but thank you so much for watching guys do please subscribe and obviously be sure to check out the video that i've done with hannah on her channel yeah and i will see you guys soon bye everyone bye. have a great day